This is a big, big, exciting show. Well, Windows Server 2012 is about making your business more agile. It's about making your data center more flexible and providing you the ability to extend your data center to the cloud securely on your terms. Quite simply, Windows Server 2012 is about providing the best cloud OS. Let's start with scale. With Server 2012, we want to virtualize those workloads considered non-virtualizable. Workloads that require dozens of cores, hundreds of gigabytes of memory, are likely SAN attached and with exceptionally high I.O. requirements. Well, today, we want to redefine performance. We want to redefine scale. So today, with Server 2012 and Hyper-V, we'll support up to 320 logical processors per server, up to four terabytes of memory per server, and up to 64 virtual processors per VM. In addition, you can see we support, I've got 100 gigabytes of memory allocated to this virtual machine, but we'll support up to a full terabyte of memory per VM. And whether this VM has been allocated 10 gigabytes, 100 gigabytes, or a full terabyte, it still costs the same. In terms of virtual storage, our virtual disks now support up to 64 terabytes per virtual disk. That's 32 times anyone else in the industry. We also support the largest clusters with 64 nodes and up to 4,000 virtual machines in a single cluster. Now, if I give you a virtual machine with 64 virtual processors and a terabyte of memory, quite honestly, that's irrelevant if I can't provide the ability to give you the I.O. to actually keep those workload and those resources busy. So let's take a look at Hyper-V I.O. performance. Now, before I do, let me tell you a little bit about the hardware I'm about to show you. This is an industry standard four-socket server. It's got 80 logical processors, 256 gigabytes of memory. It has five LSI HBAs attached to 40 SSDs. Now, you may be thinking, hold on here. Why is he using SSDs? Why is he not using traditional spinning media? Well, for this next demo, we certainly could have used 15K SAS disks. However, we would have needed 4,000 disks in 10 full-size 42U containers, racks, full of disks. So we decided to opt for SSDs instead. Let me show you. I'm going to switch on over here to Iometer. Iometer, an industry standard tool, and in fact, the configuration and test that I'm going to run, industry standard. This is 4K random IOPS. This is the hard stuff, not the easy sequential stuff. This is 4K random IOPS. Q depth of 32, 40 concurrent threads. By the way, the guys over at VMware claim that they can deliver up to 300,000 IOPS from a single VM. Well, let me show you, with Windows Server 2012, we're delivering 900 985,000 985, IOPS from a single virtual machine. Let me say that one more time. Over three times more IOPS from a single virtual machine. And let me be very clear. This is not a Hyper-V limitation. We can go much, much higher. This is as fast as the hardware will go. We couldn't put any more host bus adapters in this machine. So, with support for up to 64 virtual processors, a terabyte of memory, and nearly a million IOPS in a single server, we can run over 99% of the world's SQL server. Now, while we're talking about storage, by the way, let me talk about some of our other investments in storage. For example, in Windows Server 2012, we've made some huge investments in file-based storage. For example, we have a new scale-out file server. With the scale-out file server, it intrinsically, because of the architecture, it's an active-active architecture, which intrinsically inherently means as I add more nodes, I get more scale, but I also get more continuous availability because I can remove or add nodes without any downtime. It's an extremely powerful new capability in Server 2012. And then there's what we've done with SANS. Quite honestly, this is earth-shattering with offloaded data transfer, or ODX. With offloaded data transfer, Windows Server 2012 can leverage the native SAN array capabilities in your array. Let me show you. In this first example, I'm going to copy a 10 terabyte file from 
using non-ODX storage. Now, you can see in this example, from CPU standpoint, I'm getting about somewhere between 35 to 40% CPU utilization. In terms of networking, you can see we are fully saturating Ethernet. We're getting about 78 megabytes per second. Not too bad, but in this case, the server is performing all of the copying. It's reading from the source and writing to the destination, reading from the source and writing to the destination. Well, now, on split screen, let me actually copy the same file, 10 gigabyte file, using ODX-enabled storage. Now, make sure you don't look away. I'd hate it if you missed the demo here. Again, this is a 10 gigabyte file, and what are you seeing? You're seeing that I'm copying and getting over a gigabyte per second. I'm copying a 10 gigabyte file in 10 seconds. This is awesome ODX-enabled storage from our partners over at EMC. And by the way, there was no network utilization at all because this was leveraging the capabilities in the array. When you couple ODX with a bunch of our other enhancements in storage, virtual fiber channel, um, cluster enhancements for replication and synchronous replication, as well as a swath of other capabilities, quite simply, if you own a SAN, Windows Server 2012 is a no-brainer. It's really that easy.